Welcome to Warblog. Today we're looking at the Elegantora and Al Ferdin section of the Yom Kippur War. I shouldn't really say the of the Yom Kippur War. It's of the um, of the first offensive against the Barlev line. So, Operation Bad Air. So basically, this El Cantara and Al Ferdin scenario is this scenario is the El Cantara and El Ferdin scenario of the first operation of Yom Kippur War. Um, which was Operation Bad Air against the Bar Lev Line uh, crossing the Suez Canal, which was essentially a successful e Egyptian operation, um, and is in this sort of context one of four, and I might as well put it into some context. Interestingly enough, well, because this was a game that I did years ago, and I've often felt that it was a bit lacklustre. Um, but it's sort of interesting, because when you put it into perspective and look at this, although this doesn't look very exciting, this is actually quite a significant and reasonable representation of the sort of situation to some extent. Now, it's not the situation that we're talking about, it's not Operation Bad Air, this is Operation Gazelle, in which the Egyptians basically counter-attack, punch through the Egyptian forces, cross the Suez, and sort of head down, you know, towards Cairo, or something like that. Um, so, so basically, this gives you an overview. So what we've got are multiple uh, sections. In the first instance, we've got so we've got this bit of canal here that then runs into this lake, and I think this is, um, I know it's not right, the Lake of Despair, but we'll find out. I don't want, the Great Bitter Lake Crossing. So that's this scenario here. So, and that's the Great Bitter Lake, and they actually cross the lake. So what you've got here, there is um, the Serap Serapium crossing. Um, interesting to note, the thumb has two canals. <laughs> this is because when I first did it, I actually sort of thought well, I used the Google Maps, and there's two canals, but this is the 2015 canal. It's not even as though it was a late, late built in the 80s. It's built in 2015, so not that long ago. I've since edited it, obviously, and um, now there's just one canal, but to be quite honest, it's probably still, you can almost see where the other one went. Um, so this is the sort of that midsection. Um, and then you get what we're dealing with now, which is the El Cantara and Al Ferdan scenario. So there's El Cantara, and El Ferdan is actually on the, um, the the western side of the Suez Canal. So these are just landmarks, really. Um, and here's the proposed bridgehead. So they wanted to punch across here and then create a line, basically along there. So you've got to push them back or and control that. So when you look at these scenarios, and there is another one, obviously, the fourth one, and that is under construction at the moment, and that's this Port Said sector, which is here. So they take out these, basically it's the fight, the battle against these three forts, but I will put other fortifications in. So when you start to sort of look at all this, and then sort of look at it, in perspective on this one, Operation Gazelle, you can then start to see there's the Great Bitter Lake, so there's the Great, Great, Great Bitter Lake crossing. This is actually Artillery Road, 
on that one I put artillery rows on this one or this one and that's not correct I think I put it as this one so there's there are some incorrect things because I'm figuring it out um, as you can see this is a bit artillery row but I've got another map that shows artillery road being along here so this is probably a lot of wasted map over here but um, so that's that and then this bit here you now we could just have it as four hexes or so is this so there's the great bit of lake there and there's Timash Tim Sar Lake um, and then we've got the bit that we're on at the moment where which is there you can see Kantara so L whatever will probably be about there there's Ismailia um, and you could probably see Ismailia just there so clearly you know there's a lot going on in these small hexes and that's why I split it up really um, because I sort of want to you know instead of just doing it you know like this and putting all that action that happens in there in just two hexes you, you, you know I've, I've split it up so that you can see it um, and the port side action is this sort of section here so and this is only the very beginning and now it's been ages really that I have well obviously I haven't done a lot on the Arab Israeli wars but I have actually just bought a book on this a Yom Kippur book it's actually apparently quite a good one um, and I've also bought the Six Day War um, mainly because I just watched the documentary and I'm in a sort of I wouldn't say I'm in a a creative mood so to speak because I'm stuffed for time but I'm I'm sort of you know I'm I'm in a place where I'm generally have a little more time and a little more inclination to doing the research so anyway I've ordered these two books from eight books they won't be here for you know, another sort of week or so but I'm really looking forward to getting them and hopefully trying to do a bit more of the Yom Kippur War because the thing is the Yom Kippur War and the Six Day War are both you know neither of them are actually that long in fact none of them are that long uh, one of the reasons it's taken me so long to get into is because they seem quite complex but now that I'm sort of getting into it they don't seem that complex at all um, and so I mean, let's just have a look at what we've got because we've got the Arab-Israeli War of 48 so I don't even think we've got anything on the Six Day War yet so that'll be a first and then we've got the Yom Kippur War and, and to be quite honest I mean I'm just having a wild guess here but I think that's it for the Arab-Israeli Wars and they so for all this time I've been doing all these other things I haven't done it because it's just it's a bit like the sort of Second World War you, you've got to be careful because everyone will say oh that's wrong that's wrong <laughs> um, but hopefully I'll get some good ground and, and I definitely want to put something on the um, the Six Day War in just so that I've got a slot for it and then I can s start remembering it because it does seem quite simple you, you know and it does seem quite specific as well and when I get this book hopefully I'll be able to split it up sing similarly I probably will do uh, I don't want to spend too much time on this talking about general stuff but I probably will do an overall and that's what I want to do on the 48 war as well so that you can actually say okay well that's not the overall is it the overall is well the overall is 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 that so I might do another one like this and then actually do it so that you can sort of you can play it overall for example you might want to say well why didn't they cross here oh I don't know um, but anyway so this is that section of the map um, and I usually say this but it's quite interesting um, and it is uh, but there's quite specific unit designations um, now I've, what I've just done I've just done what I did in the last one I've just filled this in with two two one two two one I mean this artillery goes on top basically you've got this pattern of infantry they're just defending these so this isn't really necessarily that 
specified. Um, but these units, for example, the 7th Brigade, so this is the 77th Battalion of the 7th Armoured Brigade, you know, they, they were actually there on, on, the, on, on the star. But then you've got reinforcements on both sides. Um, so looking at the Israeli ones, so you've got all this sort of filler. And then you've got the 7th, 77th Battalion of the 7th Armoured Brigade, which we were just sort of looking at there. Uh, you've got the 82nd Battalion, who are also on map. I um, won't look at them just, just yet. And then um, you've got just the, the, these are actually in two separate locations. So this uh, 14th Armoured Brigade, a company from the 14th Armoured Brigade. We'll just have a quick look and just thing with this big order of battle it's so long isn't it it's sort of scrolling anyway so what we've got is one of them's there so there's the 82nd of the 7th there's the 77th of the 7th we've got that guy there and we've got that guy there and obviously he's got some air defense next to him so those are the sort of four distinct units that were on the map to start with um, but they do get not considerable but also not not small either they do get some fairly reasonable reinforcements um and i've, I've split it up i've i've nonchalantly decided that seven turns is a day so you've got seven turns before the next day and these came on the following day so these came on the seventh the battle started on the sixth um and then you've got these ones which came on the eighth so you know that's how i've done it and they they sort of enter the map in column formation at various locations so these ones come on turn 15 because this whole brigade comes on the 217th or is it and then the 204th um yeah they, they're sort of I don't know why they're actually like that actually but any, anyway I'm not going to start thinking again um, I wonder if that's correct but anyway so you get all these reinforcements and there's quite a lot of them and I did actually make them stronger because I assumed that the, um, the Israelis sort of this is where they sort of started to win but it wasn't actually they they still lost these these so after I think about the fourth day of um, Operation Badr, the Egyptians actually are, are, are they win, they hold their ground, they hold their sort of they hold whatever uh, beachhead they have taken. And I don't think it's as far advanced everywhere, but it's not until sort of when they do. I'm not sure whether it is actually Operation Gazelle, because I haven't really got that far, but it's not until they actually do their actual counter attack. That they actually turn the tide so be interesting to see whether or not these can actually turn anything but you know i don't think they will but they are a little stronger an interesting thing about the egyptians so you've got the same thing with the egyptians so you you do actually have the uh, 15th independent armed brigade coming in on seven uh, uh, on this the second day they, they this is probably staggered so you've got three 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 so you've got that you know they're coming in in columns so to speak but these egyptian saker battalions are basically airdropped and i made them a little weaker than normal infantry but that you airdrop those and there's the entire brigade so you know there's a lot of these units one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 14 so you know I, I put them in on turn three because i don't think that it was the first thing they did one thing to bear in mind is that like with the like with the other scenarios um well they, they've got a lot of anti i've given them a lot of anti-tank because this was sort of part and parcel from what i've gathered i haven't i don't want to say i'm an expert at things yet i'm yet to get my book all i've been reading is the wikipedia and a few stuff there's plenty to be to read on the internet but it's so specific it, it becomes confusing in its own right so uh, I but the thing is you do learn so as, as, as I pick things up hopefully the other stuff that I read will slot into place and I make fine adjustments I already made a, 
a fine adjustment to um, Serpian crossing by adding these units, these two units, the 74th um, and the the 600th, which are actually reinforcements. Now they are sort of reinforcements that um, could have come in. They sort of appear here. No, 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 no. They, they sort of appear here, but they sort of go this way. But they sort of could go that way. But they focus really more on here. So I've included them here. Um, but so you get these um, Serapian units, if I've said it right. And the whole idea is there that they, they sort of cut off the. Uh, the line of attack. They don't cut. They don't necessarily cut off the line of retreat. So you can basically put those where they where you want, and that seems really quite intense. Now the thing is, they did sort of take losses due to anti-aircraft because they were flying outside of SAM protection zones. Um, they were they were, they went in flying low in helicopters. Um, but you know, so it'd be interesting to see how that works out. Um, so essentially, really what you've got to do sort of first off is um, figure things out. So, you know, you've got lots of these sort of infantry units at the front. There are some reserve units which I haven't included. Um, hopefully I'll be able to maintain my sort of focus on this to sort of maybe determine whether I do or don't include them later. Um, but to be quite honest, I sort of think that this is going to be really easy. Um, I'm not sure whether I've finished off talking about the anti-tank. The anti-tank is actually quite specific because from what I've read they used a lot of it to take out these armoured units, especially the armoured units that come in to reinforce for the Israelis. So the Israelis bring in these armoured units as we say on turn 7 and, and 14 and you know they suffer heavily from all these anti-tank weapons. But the thing is from what I've gathered, the Egyptians actually sort of start to run out of anti-tank weapons. Um, and so when the Israelis sort of do their counter-attack, which might be Operation Gazelle, they've run out of effective um, anti-tank weapons. Um, and also, in particular, anti-tank weapons that are capable of harming, penetrating the armor that they actually do their counter-offensive with because they use some sort of pretty tough tanks and they've got anti-tank weapons but they're not good enough against the tanks that the Israelis then subsequently use. Um, so it's all sort of interesting really. Um, so the first thing, now what they did, <coughs> they cross here and here. You know, if you look at it on Wikipedia there's fairly reasonable maps. In fact I will has it to show this one. This is what I've been looking at to be quite honest for a while. So there you you, you don't get to see um, that's interesting. And that is interesting because I haven't done this one. They they do actually cross there, look. They cross there with the seventh and the nineteenth and I haven't done it. I wonder why. I probably it's because it's at the bottom of the Wikipedia article. I think it might be something to do with the distinction between the second and third army. So there's the Port Said operations. Anyway, that's what we're looking at now. That's the Serapian crossing. I've called it the Serapian crossing. And as you see, it's not got any proper name. This is how far they get. And these are the counter-attacking units on the 6th, the 7th and the 8th. And as you can see, it goes on to the 13th. Um, but I don't see anything there for the 13th, so I will do that one, you know, um, and that will possibly put Operation Gazelle, this map, so we will be doing that one as well. Um, you know, I'm fascinated by the actual specifics of things like this, because you sort of, well, we could just get one counter and then just do it, but, you know, but this um, Bitter Lake Crossing seems quite interesting. So there's the um, there's the 15th, which we do have, as coming on on the 2nd. But this, the 23rd Brigade, are actually in reserve, and I haven't put those on. But, you know, this is 
this is basically about as about, about as sort of um, good as my intelligence is on on things there is actually another site this one here actually which is if you can see there it's apps dtic.mil and dtic is some sort of american military site and well I'll, I'll show you it's quite interesting it's, it's a naval war college egyptian staff solution operational art of war planning for the 73 arab israeli war um it it's quite interesting actually because um it doesn't actually say it does it it doesn't actually say top secret or but well, it's actually 1998 so this isn't actually that out of date but maybe these documents come from much earlier and it has dated 1998 as well but you can read all this and it's really sort of 10 key words that relate to your paper strategic context operational planning analysis space time i mean these things sort of make me laugh really I mean, what what's time got to do with anything but you know just reading the operation battle according the coordinated egyptian syrian attack on israel and the syrian thing is through the golden heights and i've yet to even get there but you know it all this just a level of research and to sort of you know looking at the historical background it just really you know really sort of intrigues me that's where it's at for me you know just trying to sort of figure out from this is why the second world war doesn't appeal to me as much because it's already been done you know there's probably already i'm not these are not educational videos they're just sort of you know to some extent to support the game and you know to sort of communicate maybe with people that have similar levels of you know research interests so to speak you know but i also like to read this document you know um not everyone wants to well do other things um there are people in the world that like this sort of stuff you know and um so that's where i'm appealing um so it's got all this stuff and uh you know i mean just sort of well figures you know egyptian disposition 6th of october egyptian air operations these are actually the things i'm going to look for because i've been looking at them the israeli counterattack on the 7th and the 8th um so it's, it's quite a few pages here but it goes through quite quickly i don't ever print anything out because i'm a big one for not printing anything but I, i'd love to, i just love to sort of print something like this out um but you know i don't as a matter of principle i don't print anything out um it's not it's, it is sort of to some extent the money but i know i print things out and then never look at them and so it's a sort of self-discipline really but you know i've not for example i haven't really read this <laughs> i just sort of looked sped thread through it and i've had these these things so you've got the sort of map of israel um and then there's the sinai and obviously these represent something but i've had this open on my laptop for about three months now um ever since i did the first one and i sort of thought well, i mean why, why didn't i do that i mean it does actually say it. it's not hidden is it so there's the 7th and the 19th as we've got the 7th and the 19th and this is the thing about historical research is that when you look at things they should match so they should match with this and this and i just I say this quite often. I mean, you can actually see the bridgeheads there, one there. So there's one there, and there's actually two there. On there, there's two there and two there. And there's two there, and then there's obviously the Little Lake Crossing. But with something like this, it's so well documented that it's not really that difficult to figure it out, and you're not really going to get too more into it than 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 is possible. It's been done. And most things have, but you know, when you're looking at things like the Nigerian Civil War, and there's a really good book on it that I want to get, but um, they're just so expensive. But it's, getting good books on these things is difficult, you, you know. But most of the wars are just not documented, not in the sense that you want to look at them, documented from the humanistic point of view, especially more so these days for some reason. But the thing is, when you look at historical documents and reference, well, when you're studying, when you're researching history, everything falls back to source material. And all historians, they sort of, they look for source material and then they spend the rest of their lives arguing over that source material. But source material is definite and finite. Um, you know, obviously there's sort of variations on sort of 
you know witness accounts but for example uh, I met someone that was studying uh, Jesus Christ of all things um, which I thought was ironic considering what I research and but he, he was talking about that same principle and you know but it's more poignant in that because there is only so much evidence to support the life of Jesus Christ um, so many documents and everyone's arguing over the same things you know the Turin shroud and sort of other bits and pieces but when you consider it it's all about actually identifying and tracing source material and then interpreting it and then so when you actually start to come forward in time you get more and more information like with the Vietnam War which I think has probably got to be the most documented war ever maybe not as much as the Second World War because the Second World War was longer but you, you know you know you there's things out there with just about everything in it but anyway so I, I've had this open for a while and um, I mean, yeah so um, so basically, I, I'm not sure why I brought this up now, but basically, um, this is another one of the documents. So I haven't really got, I haven't really got any further than that. I've sort of looked at that, but that doesn't really do much for me. Um, and then there's this sort of supposed, um, this is the consolidation. It does, this again doesn't really make a lot of sense. I'm presuming that's the, that's their front line. And there's Artillery Road, you see. Artillery Road. That's interesting, actually, because I thought it was there. There. So this is this is actual research happening because obviously I've sort of talked about um, the Great Middle Lake crossing, and their objective was to take Artillery Road. So basically, what I should do is put a road in that sort of goes along down here. So the whole idea is there's Great Middle Lake. And we can see that Artillery Road is there, and if it's that's the length of the lake it's probably about half the length onward which would put it approximately there so that's something that i can do so that brings it that makes it a little bit more interesting um but that is sort of how these things work because there is no wikipedia or book that says this is where artillery road is it's not on google maps you know and there's other things like what are all these hills here you know, I haven't actually got this far with my sort of critical thinking, but this is what I like to do. So I think, well, maybe I could put these hills in, and maybe they're specific places, um, etc. And look, there's a bridge, there's, there's a key even, so they had a ferry. Extent of Egyptian bridgeheads, look. That's interesting. The, the, the Great Bitter Lake crossing wasn't to secure ground in the same sense. It was to interdict the artillery road in certain places. So I will be doing this this first bit down here, and yeah. So I mean, I don't know what I call it, but I'll probably call it the Port Suez offensive or something along those lines. Um, but anyway, so what we've got is these two locations. I think that's why I, how I got there. So they they are sort of not necessarily. So if you look there, what you've got is on this one. This is what I, this is this is why I brought this up. It's sort of dawdling, I get lost easily. But there's El Quintara, and so I put that on there, and then it says El Ferdan, but it gives you the impression that El Ferdan's on the other side of the canal, but it's not according to um, Google. It's on this side, so that's why it's called El Quintara, El Ferdan. So here I'll probably call it, you know the Suez front in the same way that this is called Port Said sector I'll call, probably call this one the Suez sector I'm looking forward to that one actually now that I've discovered it but this is all swamp as well so I haven't actually got as far as doing that you can see it's all sand but this will all be swamp I don't know whether that will actually make any difference um, so anyway so that's why we've got these places and so the first thing to do is start thinking about how you can do it and I don't think there's really too much into in it but obviously you've got your engineers now I think there's probably plenty there's uh, there's one engineer in there and I think there's probably another one in there there's one there anyone else no but there's two in reserve there and I thought I put two in reserve down here yeah the thing to bear in mind here is that this is the Serapian sec sector so really to not 
do anything south of that line because it'd be tempting to sort of counterattack across it or to come across this way maybe in some way um so you know so the whole idea is it's north of ismalia um but so they are like the whole point is to get so you've got some engineers there but they're quite precious but the thing is they're not as precious as they were when there were two canal lines so you only got to cross once and what i haven't actually put on here is any mines that's it that's i'll have to do that i'll just go back and slap loads of mines in all this will be mined it's got to be it's all got to be mined and tank trapped so there's something that i can do um so you've got to sort of figure out you know what you're going to do with well how you're going to cross and I don't know I mean I guess it sort of comes up to where are you going to attack you know in the first instance I mean I think it's just gonna I think quite honest it's just gonna be so easy and and well perhaps to sort of just just touch on something that i was going to touch on initially um they start this attack with an extensive i think i think to where it says this it says extensive but two hour bombardment and so what you've got along here are let's actually just reload that well you've got artillery and so, and I think it's evenly spread. I'm not sure because I can't select those. Um, I'm not sure whether there's two in each of these. I think there might be. So you get a hell of a lot of artillery. And basically, in theory, you spend the first two hours. Now that could equate to the first turn. But see, what you could choose to do is to bombard a particular point. Now they've got eight range, which is pretty impressive. So you've got three and three. So you could have these three going against one point one two three four five six seven eight so they can all get very they can all encompass their sectors so for example you might say well we're going to come across here so you might want to clear out this hex because it's got one unit in but it's got some artillery um, but you might want to clear out two hexes but you sort of think, well, where are the engineers? Well, I think there's one in there. So if you could say we're going to cross here, but I think they crossed up here. But you might want to put two bridges here. But I would be inclined to go for this hex because you get a unit and you get some artillery, which is going to be pretty much the only thing that can cause any real pain. So you could just pound everything against that. And you've got all these air units. So what you could do is sort of have decide where you're going to break through. So maybe try to say, well, we're going to take out both of these with our artillery bombardment and our large air force. Um, so, considering that, what we could do there's some engineers there. To move these guys into there. I'm on Wi-Fi here. I think the Wi-Fi connection is not very good. Because we're going to take out these two boxes. So these guys can cross there. <clears throat> See, I'm tempted to sort of move there. like that now they can't engineer anything now because they've moved but next turn they'll be able to build their bridges so what we want to do 
is to put a whole bunch of infantry on top. So that's that's you won't get any more in there. So that's one, two. Three. So we prepared our um, our our initial force. This is interesting. Bearing in mind that there will be minefields and tank traps all through here. Now obviously we want to sort of get these into position. I'll come back to these in a bit. I'm only going to do this top section because I don't know if all night. Everybody's been warbling for 36 minutes. So what I'm going to do is let's see. I'm going to put three on this and three on that. Those should all appear. There'll probably be a, a lot of them. Like, like well, that's an, that's interesting because. We've probably got these guys in there as well. And I won't be able to figure out which one's which. He's at 2D. Can I figure out? Probably not. 2D, 2D. Oh no, so these 2Ds. 0.5. Okay, so that's not too bad. And one of these guys from 2J. Okay, so we've whittled him down to 2.2 .2 and him to 4.3. So we know we've got a 2J into there. Okay, and these guys who are 2P, two point eight, that's not too bad. Two. 3.12 so they've been taking a pounding now we've got 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 12 13 so we have six on each, six on each side. So six for the north, six for the El Canta sector, six for Al Ferdin. But with one extra, I'm going to do it on this because I'm not going to do the Al Ferdin one. So that's seven, so four and three. So four air attacks into here. I'm doing them separately because it seems to be better a better way to do it. Now 
no effect. What happened there? Oh, I think I know. Or do I? Something went a bit fishy, but not to worry. So, we did 1.6 against this, and he routed, he failed his morale check, and he's left at 3.3. Not, it's not too fast, is he? I think it's interesting actually that we're doing the sort of damage at this rate because it doesn't doesn't really sort of strike me as being unrealistic. You know, it's not as though we're just pounding them and everything's vanishing and it's so easy. Um, now we're going to do three against this guy. Oh, I see it's sort of loading. I'm on Wi-Fi here and I've actually determined that that's the issue. My own Wi-Fi, I think this laptop has a crappy Wi-Fi thing because I've never experienced it on other Wi-Fi connections. I should maybe we get wired connection, got plenty of cable. Eight point five. Yeah, I don't want to leave it with like connection like this too much. It's not just that, my, my actual computer is, is slowing down, I can hear it whirring, having difficulty recording and all this. It's bizarre really, because I spent quite a lot of money on 16 gigabit of RAM, and it's a clever Lenovo machine that has, I think, 8 gigabytes of virtual RAM. It's a special RAM that it's got. And I thought, wow, this would be so good, but the graphics card, I think, is just really crap, and that sort of is a bottleneck um, anyway I do like this laptop it's my special gaming laptop for this really <laughs> um, anyway so well that's it really I mean I'm not going to take it any further because I spent too long already but he's at 4.5 he's at 4.8 so they're, they're sort of fairly knackered He's at 3.3. We destroyed the artillery, which is a bonus. We're in a position to create bridgeheads. Bridgeheads. So we can come in, create a bridgehead, come across here, come across here, and possibly attack into there. Possibly attack into there. Could have attacked there, actually. That might have been an option. But I think the thing to bear in mind is that they will, the Israelis will have a turn to shuffle things around. Now, obviously, they're going to get a feeling that the main offensive is going to come across here. And so they're probably going to reinforce several hexes. Namely, this this and this so they'll be able to push units from there that way and obviously these very big armoured units will be able to move quickly into there there and there and there's five of them so they could almost put 
two, two, one. So that section is suddenly going to become invincible next turn, which is interesting for forward planning. Um, it is interesting because we could have actually maybe focused our artillery and air power on that. But the thing is to bear in mind, before we do any attacks, we'll have more artillery coming in, uh, more air power coming in. Um, and you know we could actually cross and not attack because they can't they don't look like they really be able to do counter attack so we could move in and further when you consider the fact that when these have minefields and um tank traps roadblocks they won't be able to uh, they won't be able to move and attack anyway so we could start moving them in and then just filtering them sort of up So we can move them across and then move them there, move them across, move them there. These engineers are going to take a while. Four turns later, we'll be able to get some more bridges. So then we can start opening up the, um, the crossings. No, we've done blue. Let's use this purple color. Crossings here and maybe here. You, you know, or something like that. Um, I think it's an interesting game, and it's so much so that I could have maybe divided it up into two sections. And you know, there's nothing to sort of stop me from actually doing that in two separate games, so that you can consider this part of the um, of the operation in isolation to this. And that's how I always sort of think of these things. You know, I, I'm really not one for this sort of big map that, you know, not necessarily looks just like this, because you could have a big map like this, but it is actually a lot of hexes. That you, you know, you could, for example, you, if if they were to scale, well, they're not, so you can't. But if they were to scale, you you could you could print out the port side, the um, the Great Bitter Lake crossing, the Serapian crossing. Um, and, and this one, and you could piece them all together and get a massive game. Um, but I think there's two distinct games in there, um, and it might be interesting to sort of see, how, you know, what sort of depth can be achieved by by doing that. I mean, you could almost do it with the same sort of, you know, forces, just split them up, etc. But I'm gonna leave it at that anyway, because it's nearly it's 47 minutes, so it's, I mean, it's not nearly an hour, but you know, it's getting there and I'm not going to get through the next stage. Um, but I think it's it's definitely interesting. It would be interesting to see what sort of effect that armoured stuff has. I think the key thing there is that it's not going to be able to defend um, in the long run. You know, they're going to be pounded and I think one of the other things to bear in mind and this is actually I think a bit of a flaw in the game or well, it might not be um, I can never remember um, but we've got anti-tank I don't know No, we, we're out of range. We, we can initiate the combat, but we're, we're not in range, so um, which is good because that's how it should be. But what I'm saying is, we, we haven't necessarily used everything, we've got something else sort of in the pipe, so to speak, another string to the bow, and it's not our fantastically fast Wi Fi connection. Maybe it's just the hard drive transferring data. It's not a lot of data, is it? I half expect a Microsoft update any moment. Whoa, 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 whoa. It's wearing. Really working hard to do this. Maybe it should be 
I should replace it with a clockwork computer. What I'm getting to here is we, we can't even see anything, can we? Jesus Christ, this is slow. F5. Yeah, sometimes that helps. Um, we've got this anti-tank. One, two, and he might be able to get there. Now, I think these, these units should only have a maximum of two range in this period of, of time. But look, we've got all of this stuff that can reach. So, it's in reach. Let's just see whether we can figure out what is in reach. We've got about six units there. Oh, that's just too slow, isn't it? What have we got here? So we've got three in there. One, two, three, and three in there. So that's where they're coming from. Let's stop thinking on that. Hard time of it. So, three in there, three in there, and they can all hit that hex. So why don't we do, try and blow this unit out with our anti-tank. I feel a bit cheap doing that. I we should, we should limit that. Now I can do that, but I haven't done anything. I've hard-coded it yet. Okay, so let's do three. Point six. Here's three point nine. Point zero. They're not very good against infantry, so that's good. If this was against tanks, they would be getting much more. So they had point three and point three at four, which wasn't much, and they've brought it up to point four three. Um, they don't lose anything by firing. So one, two, three. Let's try this stuff here. Four point eight. Go for the bigger one. Oh, one damage. So that's five point eight. So he could route. No. Point three. Six point one. Okay. Well, that's that's pretty much about as much as can be done. Um, that's got a bit of wire, I think. Um, and obviously we've got this section down here. We do exactly the same thing. Choose two points. But this one might be more attractive, look. But it might not. You know, down here I think we put the engineers there or there, because that's where they can go. I think there... What's the road network like? Yeah, so we can threaten to build a bridge straight into that hex and pummel everything we've got now, artillery-wise. Point eight. And this would be the half on this. 
3.2 I'm not going to go any further because it's, it's too slow but you get the point that would be quite an interesting section I'll show you. Memory, 20 gig. Wi-Fi. So that's it, isn't it? Plenty of memory, plenty of CPE, plenty of disk. But Wi-Fi is made of pants. Okay, well, 56 minutes. I'm not going to do any more, but I think that that's going to be an attractive hex. It might be worth just building a bridgehead into there and one into there. So we've got a bridgehead there. We can load up into this hex and this hex, plow everything onto it, and then attack it from there and across here. Maybe not even from there, just from there, maybe one unit there to get the 10%. And then just storm into there. Interesting. Okay, well, um, hope you enjoyed that. I'll speak to you later. Cheerio.